Hi guys, I'm here to do my June reading wrap up. I am pretty chuffed with all the books that I've read. I had so many five stars and so many four stars books and oh my god I was just very content in general with what I managed to read and just yeah very very excited. I knocked quite a few books off of my TBRs um, and yeah I just, I just feel very accomplished and very happy and content at my reading progress this month. So jumping into all the stats and things like that before we get into the actual reviews of the video. Um, a breakdown very quickly of my genre and audience tracker. I read three books that I classed as fantasy, one book that I classed as science fiction, uh, four books that I classed as contemporary, one that I classed as a classic, uh, four that I classed as YA, three that I classed as middle grade and two that I classed as adult and overall I read a total of nine books. All nine of those were physical books, um, one of them was more of a backlist book for myself, five of those were a newer release from 2020 onwards and about seven of those were something that I've recently hauled again from 2020 onwards. In this month I did have three buddy reads so when I get to those books I'll tell you a little bit more about those but for now let's just dive right in to the reviews. Funnily enough the first book I am kind of just going to breeze through because I've got a whole reading vlog which at this point I have still yet to edit that will be coming out most likely after this wrap up I think so keep an eye out for that and that is a book that I've been wanting to read for ages and have finally got to and that is Tommy Adeyemi's Children of Blood and Bone which is the first book in I don't know if it's a trilogy or a duology but I know the second book is Children of Blood and Virtue or no Virtue and Vengeance or Vengeance and Virtue and yeah I'm really pumped for that sequel now because this one I thoroughly enjoyed. So in terms of the details for this book I gave it a five stars and um, it was originally released in 2018 by Macmillan's Children's Books which is an imprint of Pan Macmillan and it's like this YA fantasy inspired by African um, like mythology and things of that nature um, a lot of people have described it as Avatar but not <laughs> I don't know I can kind of see where people are coming from but there's so much more and so much less than just saying it's like Avatar so anyway I won't go into my thoughts as I say I've already got a reading vlog but I really did enjoy this so very excited and happy that I finally got around to this one Next up I picked up a sequel and this is A Tangle of Spells by Michelle Harrison which is the third book in the A Pinch of Magic adventure. This one I gave a 4 out of 5 star released this year by the publishers Simon and & Schuster and is a middle grade fantasy story. So in this series we're basically following a trio of sisters um, who have like a pinch of magic in their repertoire and they get up to lots of adventures and a lot of troubles arise whenever they're around but they're basically trying to you know remember the meaning of family use their little bit of magic when they get into these difficult situations and just live their life in the first book they are trying to break a curse that's upon them um, which means they have to stay on the island that they were born and raised um, for so so long but for Betty who's our main character out of the trio of sisters this just isn't gonna cut it for her she is a adventure seeker thriller at heart and she needs to know how to break this curse why it was set upon them who did it when all those details and that's what you find out in the first book the second and third book follow their own little adventures I would say in a sense you can I guess read them as standalones because the stories are very much you know encased and just book by book like they don't flow in that regard like it's not continued they are very much separate entities but at the same time like you'll miss out on who the characters are and because they're recurring obviously and just the growth that you see um, of the children and the relationship between the sisters and such so definitely read them all together but they are like their own separate entities as stories you know that 
this doesn't have a massive cliffhanger if that makes sense i absolutely adored this it was so enjoyable and i really loved seeing another kind of magic um implemented into this story so that was pretty interesting however i would have loved to have seen more from their dad in this book and also a little bit more about the magic behind the tiktok forest because that's something that really piqued my interest and i feel like we only really kind of got a glimpse of that and that was kind of near the end so more of that would have been awesome just for my personal satisfaction next up i finished my first buddy read of the month and that was 12 years a slave a true story by solomon northup which i read with Gemma from reader book gem and yeah this was i think both of our first time reading this and this counts as a book that was on the eight classics that i wanted to read this year so i can tick that one off and also just a book that i've been wanting to get to for a while like it's only in the last couple of years where i felt like i and mentally ready to read this because I'd always thought it was going to be such a struggle um you know particularly because of the content and just you know knowing that it's a real life story I think would have it hurt me <laughs> mentally um you know I laugh about it but it's true I think I, I would have struggled really hard to read this if I was younger like if I studied it at school or something so I think I did the healthier option and waited until like my later years to kind of fully appreciate it and you know obviously I still felt stuff for it but I was able to sort of just like detach a little bit and kind of just read it as a factual kind of account and like wow this is a piece of history you know but anyway before I get into all those depths um a little bit of information about the book itself this one I gave a three and a half stars out of five um this particular edition came out in 2014 but I did say it is a classic I think it was originally written in 19 I can't remember let's see Ah, I do apologise. It was published originally in 1853, which is the year that Solomon Northup was rescued. So, yep, it is a bit of a classic. And, yeah, it's classic memoir, an adult, published by Collins Classic, this particular edition. Um, so, this is the story of Solomon as he is kidnapped and sold into the slave trade. Um, it is just diabolical what people can do to other human beings and it's it just really makes you see the lower the lower people that we have in society and you know the drags that we see of this civilization this so-called civilization where people and still doing in human trafficking today in modern day slavery you know people selling human bodies and thinking that's okay and just getting a, a profitable sum from it i just think it's it's so wrong and it's so horrible to know that that was and still is a part of this civilization you know it just is upsetting um this was indeed a very great account of slavery um with the hope of freedom so it did have that sort of uplifting quality to the the story knowing that you know this man is going to be freed eventually you've just got to kind of get through it with him um the struggles that he faced getting there 12 years like my goodness i don't know how he managed it like i i commend him um it had a lot of good detail on the specifics of a slave's life and i really did just from like a general reading perspective appreciate the mixture of um emotive you know in comparison with the matter of fact kind of writing style i feel like that really did allow me to not negatively but healthily detach from the story at times when it could have become overwhelming and just generally like triggering um so just having that time away where i could sort of switch off to an extent my emotions and just read it like fact by fact like him just kind of telling us this is how this worked this is how this happened it was just helpful and also added to the educational knowledge of you know history basically i will say though in kind of reflection of that it did at times stray a bit too much um on the details like of the specifics i don't even know how to describe that properly but basically solomon would tell you about like some of the activities that he would do as a slave like for example cotton picking and then he'd laboriously go ahead and tell you how cotton picking was done um you know who was the best and fastest cotton picker all of this stuff but it was quite um a dry account like i didn't really need to know how it was done unless it was i mean it could have been he could have abridged it in a way that 
you could see this is how it done how it was done and then in turn how it affected him as a person like the physicality of it that would have been good but i feel like he was just kind of you know giving you general over well i say overview is quite deep um context of how this was done just for like i don't know maybe like the nerd within him at times got a little bit drier got a little bit too dense in in those things which i didn't not that i didn't care about it but i was obviously more interested in i guess yeah the emotional side of his actual journey and not the specifics of how they did this and how long it took and that sort of stuff you know um yeah i just feel like at those times it sort of lost focus on the memoir portion and really turned into more of like a factual guide if you know what i mean um but nevertheless i really did well i don't know if you can say you enjoyed this because of you know the content but i did yeah i enjoyed learning this and it was a great buddy read um very engaging very interesting and yeah i'd recommend it <laughs> so june was also read caribbean month and as it's the month of caribbean heritage i had taken part in the read caribbean challenge and read three books for that which i'm very very happy for um and so the first one of those that i read for those challenges was love after love by ingrid Persaud. this one i gave a five out of five stars it released in 2020 by faber and faber and is adult contemporary and read caribbean so this story is uh, honestly i didn't expect to love it so much it is following this kind of found family um a mother and a son and like their neighbor or like a, an acquaintance that becomes like a neighbor and such and it is literally just their lives um there's secrets in here there's love there's lgbt representation um there's just oh i just honestly the grief in this was heart-wrenching i felt just so utterly a part of these characters lives like i just really wasn't expecting to fall so hard for this book yeah it was honestly just a wonderful family drama the discussions of um grief abusive relationships the conversations around um being gay in the caribbean and what that's like for somebody and just oh my gosh <laughs> it just was on another level just so many other like relatable and moving topics within this but it never felt too much it it was just woven together so perfectly seamlessly even i honestly think that i cared about everyone's story and the actual delivery of the plot was just so believable it felt so raw and real and i really enjoyed the backdrop of um trinidad being the setting like the general setting of the story i think it was just interesting me because i'd never been there before or read a book set there so again for me it was a unique kind of plot to see and the descriptions of it and that was awesome i will say though that the timelines did get a little bit confusing for me i think they just needed to be a little bit more distinct because at times i was very much at a loss at how much time had like happened um between one event and another so i think that was probably down to the writing style which was very interesting different unique but yeah it could have been a little bit more solid on those specific events so that i you know you wouldn't get lost in the timeline so to speak so yeah absolutely loved that book the next read caribbean book i read was clap when you land by elizabeth acovedo this one i also gave a five stars um this one also released in 2020 but by hotkey books um and it is ya contemporary so this one is another one that deals with um grief and um you know strong topics so we are following the lives of two sisters whose worlds kind of collide when they find out that the others the other exists um basically their father um dies in a plane accident that's like the synopsis of the back it's that's the main kind of gist to kind of get you interested and see what it's about and you know it's quite a bold um event um but basically this then leads to them discovering that the other exists because he was living this kind of dual life um with his family in new york and his family in the dominican republic um so it's basically just about how these girls deal with that grief and then the grief on top of that finding out that their father wasn't necessarily who he thought who they thought he was um and this massive secret that he's obviously kept from them 
um, and that. So yeah, it's written in verse and oh, it was just so lyrical. <laughs> I think being told in verse really amplified the voices and the storytelling of each of the sisters. Um, they're called Yahira and Kamino and I felt like it was very distinct like who was who by the way it was written and the way their speech flow stopped and started. But that's how I was reading it anyway when you know the verse was written on the page. I didn't actually realise that um, the plane crash event was inspired by well not inspired it was a real life um, event a very unfortunate event and I feel like this story that was kind of written around fictional characters I guess based on a true event was done very tastefully um, very respectfully and I feel like it's just kind of kept that tragedy talked about you know kept it not forgotten you know because there are so many lives that were lost on that in that event so yeah i think it was done really really well to kind of keep them in memory i had so many feelings to be felt specifically when the sisters kind of were interacting and you know their initial thoughts of each other and things like that like it was just amazing and you know what it's one of those books where obviously i wouldn't want to wish the events to happen but i always used to want to wish that i had a long lost sister or twin or something despite the fact that i have like siblings and like half siblings but i don't really know them too too well um but i don't know i just <laughs> i just <laughs> wish that i had a twin somewhere but then i'm thinking about it and i'm like well that means that you know my parents held this secret from me all this time you know so maybe not anyway really enjoyed this book so um i almost forgot to mention clap when you land was also a buddy read and unfortunately um the person i was doing a buddy read with it just didn't work out for them they finished the book i believe but they didn't enjoy the buddy reading aspect and i thought that would be an interesting topic to talk about generally how um you know this isn't specific to this individual like it's cool we've discussed the book and stuff just to get thoughts but it's interesting how varied buddy reads can be um you know i'm still learning it as well i i mean it looks like i've done many but i only really started doing them halfway through last year i think so yeah and obviously you know it changes with who you're your style maybe or the way you buddy read changes with who you're doing it with and all that sort of thing but i just think there's such a cool and unique way because you know you can just put all your cards on the table if you feel comfortable with and tell them you know if you prefer a more structured version if you prefer laid back i think i'm me personally leaning more towards a more laid back style of buddy reading like i like having um a general you know maybe 50 pages a day or three chapters or whatever a day and then just check in as and when but i know that some people enjoy a more regiment regimented structured approach saying we'll check in at this time this is how much we have to read day by day because personally sometimes I, you know life gets in the way and i have to play catch up and i know a lot of people do too but it's just amazing how you know so many people can get things out of buddy reads and then so many people can't get things out of buddy reads some people are very more solitary reader other people enjoy that aspect of kind of reading in live time with someone else at the same time and just sporadically giving thoughts and opinions i think that's kind of myself and then other people are sort of more in the middle where you know they enjoy the concept of reading with someone but maybe they want to discuss it at the end of the book or maybe they want to discuss it every couple of days after a book you know after a, a few chapters of reading or so so it's just i feel like buddy reads can be very well crafted and tailored to yourself as a reader obviously everyone's going to be different and then when you're re you're reading with a particular person or a different person or a group of people they're going to have different influences you know so it's really cool to kind of see what works for people and what don't work for people so yeah i just wanted to put that out there i think buddy reads are really cool um I wish I'd started them sooner but I'm liking now that I can sort of develop my preferences of how I like to read with others and again you know happy to adapt for other people and their preferences it's it's then adding to my own repertoire you know of how I can appreciate a book and how I can appreciate um, other people's perspectives of a book that I maybe wouldn't have thought of especially if they have a very different or like opposing thought so yeah um 
please people if you have um your first experience of a buddy read i'd say don't let that rule you out maybe just use it as a learning curve to see what you like really and, and don't be afraid to say to people like hmm i wonder if we can change this about it i am struggling with this part or i'm really liking this part of the buddy read can we do more of this so yeah just thoughts that have been bubbling in my way since i've started in my mind sorry since i've started doing buddy reads and you know learning people's preferences and learning my own preferences and seeing what it can add um to the reading experience so yeah definitely don't make your first impression if it seems negative or you're like oh maybe this isn't for me maybe or this feels too structured or this doesn't feel structured enough don't let that scare you off because you can adapt it however you want however your partner your buddy read partner or group wants just put it in the air put it in the universe say i don't like this or i like this and they're easily adaptable so yeah i think buddy reads are great just you know learn to tailor it to how you like it and how you want to get the most out of it and enjoy it because you never want that to just like ruin your reading experience overall don't you i feel like that could easily taint the book that you're reading so yeah open communication um <laughs> let me know what you think about buddy reads it's just a wild tangent but it's just thoughts that have been going on in my mind um since doing more buddy reads and stuff so yeah there's that let's move on to the next review shall we the last read caribbean title that i read but not the last book that i read during june um is this one this is when life gives you mangoes by kareen getting a three and a half stars it was released in 2020 by pushkin children's books um and yeah it's middle grade contemporary so i didn't really know an awful lot about this one going in i was just very attracted to the color i thought it was very very beautiful and i'd heard um some good reviews particularly from book of sins who is the creator of read caribbean um but obviously reading it i know a little bit more about it now so we're following a young girl called clara and she's in this situation where a new girl has arrived and it's all very exciting her current best friend is has stopped being her best friend and without any reason she's been really horrible to her um but also there's the added stress that she can't remember anything that happened last summer um so it is kind of like discovering that i was going to say coming of age story but it isn't really it's more about discovering you know what happened to her and you know making new friends and oh it's it was really good i did really enjoy this one it was very heartwarming you know we had um themes of childhood friendship and grief another one that tackles grief very very well again it's very interesting to see how grief is portrayed and explored across middle grade stories and ya stories um and i felt like this was handled very well in an age appropriate way um but being you know as honest as possible with it i very much enjoyed the setting um the descriptions of the hot summer although i really dislike the heat um was very oh, it just made you feel like you were there and really set the tone and place of the story twist at the end absolutely shocked me i felt blindsided i was really not expecting that i thought it was again cleverly done amazingly done and really had this impact um tying the themes together and then i was like oh oh that makes sense it was wonderfully written um yeah i really enjoyed this one so i have three books left to read wait no <laughs> review and the third to last book was also my third and last body read of the month and this one is the land of stories book two the enchantress returns by chris colfer i think i've been reading this with cat from cat's reading corner but she's taken a little bit of a social media hi hiatus so i need to check in with her when she's next on to see what she thought about the book but um i really enjoyed this i gave this one a four out of five stars this released in 2013 by little brown books and is a middle grade fantasy so you're probably going to be hearing a lot of me talking about these series for the next couple of months just because i'm going to be reading one a month at this point so i talked about the first one in last month's wrap up being may um i always get a bit confused because i usually edit and upload these wrap ups like the first couple of days of the next month so when i say last month i'm like wait last month or last last month um, it's like going out or out out <laughs> 
anyway um this is about um, a set of siblings two twins called connor and alex as they stumble into the real life um happenings of fairy tales and it's not all as rosy and exciting as the stories have made them believe so yeah this one sees them on another adventure within the magical book of the land of stories and it was just so much fun how it was possible but it was even more fun than the first book and even more heartwarming I adored how emotional it got like it made me feel a little bit like tight in the chest and my throat closed up because i was like oh gosh but yeah i really did enjoy this one i don't have an awful lot to say about it but it's it's just a fun i feel like these might become a bit more formulaic in story structure but they're fun they're enjoyable so far looking forward to the third book all right second to last book these last two ones i literally finished just before filming this but that's okay because they're like manga and a comic so i read the third volume of assassination classroom by yusu matsui um this is such a fun random series um i gave this a four out of five stars this released in 2012 by shonen jump advanced and is ya sci-fi comedy so, as I've already briefly mentioned before, because I think I started these last month, um, it's about this alien thing that, <laughs> I don't know, entity that um, comes to the Earth after destroying half of the moon and threatens to do the same to the Earth, um, unless this classroom that he randomly wants to teach can assassinate him within the year and that's kind of the story so it's just kind of that on repeat in a way but also the tutor is you know this alien tutor is also giving the students a really good education and also helping them overcome their own weaknesses and kind of using that to hone in on their own skill set and stuff like that whilst also giving them advice on how to assassinate him it's just a bit yeah my mind's blown but it is really fun and really entertaining I will say though the one thing that I find really letting this series down is the character called Irina. She is just really predatory and it's really creepy and I feel like there's no need for her to be written that way. Like okay you can have a sexy teacher and a little bit like ooh promiscuous or whatever but when it's aimed at the students who are children that's just that's a no for me I'm afraid. It's just unnecessary. I didn't I didn't like that and it just got worse in this book so if that was just written out or she's not necessary to the story really anyway if she was just gone or her character was changed I'm sure I would have liked this even more but it's just yeah that ruins it for me unfortunately but still an enjoyable read aside from that and the last book that I read this month is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Osman and this one oh my my heart my heart oh my god there's only one more coming out after this now and i don't know what i'm gonna do this was so so sweet i gave this five stars this one released this year by hodder and Stroughton, and it is why contemporary and it is about nick and charlie who fall in love and basically yeah it's just a coming of age story it also deals with mental illness and i feel like this particular edition or volume sorry really did follow um charlie on his mental illness journey more so in this one um but it still had some really nice light and fluffy moments to kind of give your mind a break a little bit and kind of recharge from those harder topics um, but i feel like all of it was just um written very well as usual i really adored the bonus content in this one and i also really appreciate that um resources for mental illness and where to go to for help and to understand things better is included at the back of this too because as i say it's kind of an important because as i say it is a very important topic in not only this particular volume but just in general so it's good that you know you can then go and research a bit more if you need to so in terms of my favorite book um of the month ah oh, that was really difficult honestly because i had so many awesome books that i read but i'm gonna have to go to the very first book again and that is children of blood and blown i just i'm kicking myself at this point for not picking it up sooner for not listening to people i don't know why i didn't read this when it first came out but i'm glad to have read it now and i'm glad that 
you know I can enjoy it for the freshness and the newness of just having read it for the first time now so yeah really did like that one anyway you guys must let me know what you have read during June if you have any thoughts on buddy reads and you know you know how they help you or maybe you don't like buddy reads and if so I'd love to know why as well maybe what your favorite book was maybe what your least favorite book was and yeah I will speak to you in another video soon bye